Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you the fourth installment in the How to Paint Leagues of Votan Army Box series. So, uh, the, the day this video is released, the army box for the new Leagues of Votan will be in the hands of um, everybody. Um, all of your orders should have arrived and you can go and pick them up in your local hobby stores and the likes of that. Um, and just in time, I've brought out the fourth video in the series. So I have shown you guys how to paint both of the heroes, the jet bikes and the basic infantry from the set. So you should have absolutely no problem getting the entire box set painted up and ready for some cool games of 40k. I just want to once again thank Warhammer Community and Games Workshop for sending me out a preview copy of the army book um, and the army box. Um, for me to uh, review and to make these videos for you guys. So this is the fourth installment in the video. We have already brought out, like I said, the jet bike, the Cal, and the basic warrior, which means that all that's left to do is the beautiful champion model wearing the exo armor. Originally, I wasn't sure if I was even going to make this video. I thought all the other videos would pretty much cover the how-to about doing this, but I did get some requests um, to get it painted up and added to the collection. So um, I am one to please, so I have brought out the video. So uh, here it is. And um, I just want to uh, quickly thank all of my Patreons before we get into the video for um, all of their continued support. Um, and their confidence in me. Um, without your support, I wouldn't be able to keep the lights on or continue to make these awesome videos. So thank you guys so much for doing that. If anyone out there is not a Patreon member and is interested in getting involved, there's links to my Patreon campaign below um, and that will let you know all the information on the, uh, the benefits of becoming a Patreon and stuff like that. So without further ado guys, let's get the champion painted. Okay, time to get stuck into the Votan champion. When I first saw this miniature, I actually wasn't crazily impressed by it, but I think it was just a little bit of dodgy photography, gave it at a bad angle. Once I saw the 360 of it, I actually grew to love it quite a lot. So we sprayed the miniature black and then we gave it an all over coat, a zenithal coat of grey sear, and that's how I've been starting all of my Leagues of Votan miniatures so far. We then move over to Blood Angel's Red Contrast, and we're going to use this to get a base coat of red done on the entire exo suit of armour um, that this champion is wearing. Obviously I am painting up the Ymir conglomerate which is all reds, kind of uh, navy blues, blacks, those kind of colors. Um, and the army box that I'm doing is coming on quite nicely so I cannot wait to add this guy to that collection. This guy is made up of mostly exo armor. As you can see here he is <laughs> very red. We will of course break that up with some uh, some black and then lots of gold detail. He is quite an ornate piece. So when all the gold was added, that's really when I felt like the red was kind of pulled apart. But for now, we uh, blocked in all of the other colors on this miniature with black Templar. So that goes for anything that's going to be silver or metallic, um, apart from the gold parts. And uh, we want them to be black because painting silver over the, the gray sear, it's just, it's horrible and um, it takes so much more work. So I found putting a really quick coat of black over the top of it really helped when you then move to applying the silver. Um, all of the gold parts on the miniature I actually hit with the same Blood Angels Red Contrast in, in the first step because obviously building uh, gold up red is a fantastic base coat for that so it just saves time. Here it is with all of the black parts uh, blocked in. Golem and Flesh was used for his face. Very quick coat. Nothing special. It's the same skin tone that I've been using for all of the rest of my Votan, so the, the models match across the army. Sigval Burgundy, one of the new contrasts, which I'm starting to find uses for, is used to base coat any of the other uh, detail parts of the miniature. So the shaft of the hammer, um, the little leather tassel bit at the end, um, and his uh, tassel that comes off the, the back of his headpiece. Are we all going to get that burgundy color and basically act like a secondary color for this miniature? Uh, because he has no flight suit or none of his like overalls on show, he's not going to have any of the shadow blue color that we use for the rest of the models. So this will be his secondary color. Griffhound orange was used, and I basically followed the head that was on the box art. And um, so this guy is a redhead. So we've got a, a mohawk, great big bushy eyebrows, and a little mustache. So I hit them all with Griffhound Orange Contrast. And I actually think it looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it suits the look. But a very quick step, great way to knock in some base coats. 
From here, we are going to move over to Retributor Armor Gold, and we're going to apply our base coat on all of the gold details that are across this miniature. It's basically anywhere where you can see those kind of Viking, Celtic swirls and stuff on the armor. We're going to block in with gold, including his big head crest, and yeah, we're going to go for the gold for that as well. Um, it's kind of an awkward one to film because there, it's just tiny bits of detail inlaid into all of the exosuit. So I'm sorry if it doesn't show up that well on the video here, but when it jumps to the kind of the next frame, you'll see the, the difference and uh, it does definitely break up the miniature quite a lot. Um, and it's actually after I saw that phase done, it's when I really wanted to get my hands on the multi-part exosuits for the army and uh, get them painted up. So let's hope we don't have to wait too long to get our hands on the, the rest of the Votan range. As you can see on this particular miniature, there is a lot of filigree and detail. Him, of course, being the champion, he is kind of the representative of the, the army on the battlefield, martial prowess and stuff like that. Kind of step forward and deal with all comers who uh, wish to challenge the might of the, the leagues of Votan. So he's going to be pretty blinged out. Lastly, for the base coats, we're going to use Lead Belcher and we're going to go over all the bits that we did with the black. Um, except for those vents on the back, which I'm going to say are for breathing, maybe. Um, and we're going to basically put our first layer of metallics over the top of those. There's no point in going for a solid coat. You can leave the uh, block kind of black contrast paint in the recess and stuff. It will just act like beautiful shading um, and save you a little bit of time later on. From here, it's time to uh, shade the entire miniature. And for that, we're gonna go for the same shade we used for across the, uh, the rest of the Votan range in videos we've done. So that's Reichland Flesh Shade, which is, of course has lots of warm reds in it and stuff, which means it's perfect for red, gold, skin, everything. It's a perfect shade for this particular color scheme. Anybody who doubts me, just follow to the end of the video and you should be quite happy with the results. But of course, if anyone out there thinks that I should have used a different shade, and put in the comments below. I would love to know your thoughts on it. Always happy to learn. Mephiston Red was used after the shade was dried to give our first of two layer jobs to the exosuit. It's a very quick and simple layer job across all the armor panels, leaving the shaded contrast in all the recesses to uh, give the armor the depth make it look not so flat. When I painted my first Leagues of Votan miniature, the cowl in my head, I, the fist on red was supposed to be the last stage of red across the armor. Uh, but then again, I did see, and I think it kind of looks a little bit too flat and I really wanted to give it a bit of oomph. Um, so I decided to uh, go one more up and we will jump to Evil Sun Scarlet in a moment and you will see the difference. It, I think it definitely was needed. I think Votan are going to be more of an elite army than anything else. So the army is not going to be that heavy on miniatures, which means I think it's okay for you to do two layers of layering across uh, the arm. So here it is with the Mephist on red. And then we're going to go in with the Evil Sun Scarlet. It's not going to be the same as the last one. We're not going to cover the panel as much uh, with this as in Fist on Red. This is actually going to be um, somewhere between um, a layer and a highlight. So we're just going to go for the kind of high top parts of all the armor panels. The bits where the light's going to hit the most. And uh, get a nice clean coat of the Fist on Red on this. I've been debating with myself as to how clean or damaged or weathered the miniatures of the Votan should be um, throughout making this series. And I do think that I have decided that when the entire army box is completed, I am actually going to go back and add some chipping and some weathering and some damage and stuff like that. If that's something you guys would like to see as a, as a video, I'm more than happy to put out a short form video next week. It would only be kind of five minutes long showing, uh, maybe it's a time lapse or something of me um, going back across the entire army box set and adding some chipping and some weathering powder and stuff just to make them look a little bit more like the miners that they are. Um, originally, I thought maybe these guys would take care of their equipment more than anything else. The, uh, the Dwarven style thing of loving equipment and almost their religion is their equipment. So um, I thought they would take care of them a lot better. But I think some people want me to try the weathering. Iron Breaker was used to uh, layer up all of the metallic parts of this miniature. Therefore, we're going to do it across the silvers 
and we are going to kind of scratch our edge highlight the gold as well and um, bright silver over a nice gold uh, it's it's a perfect highlight color it really makes the gold pop and of course it saves time on this layer job because we don't have to uh, go between a light silver and a light gold to try and highlight it um, I definitely think it makes the gold pop even more so just like the base coat we want to go in there we just don't want to fill the recesses in and as you can see me doing this gold part here it's just a couple of dots super quick super effective across some of the rays like this is the largest portion of gold across the armor and I, I think I applied the layer the highlight to it in about five seconds um, and I think it looks fantastic Cadian flesh tone was used as the quick layer for the face obviously there's nowhere else you put Cadian flesh tone in this particular paint scheme uh, sorry I held the model a little bit too close to myself when I was doing this because I was trying to be careful around his nose and ears and lips and stuff and um, so I almost pulled it out of frame hopefully that doesn't annoy you guys too much I do apologize I know I make that mistake um, kind of too much on this channel grab a white any white you like that you're happy with and um, color in any of the lights or any bits you want to be glowing across this miniature When that's dry, all I did was grab a Talazar blue contrast paint and paint over those bits that I did white to make it seem as though he's got some sort of glowing energy source. And for any who haven't heard me pay, talk about my Cal video, uh, when I applied this bit, I was like, oh, I painted Iron Man, whoops. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Who can complain about a Leprechaun Iron Man? Not me. I could say a Leprechaun because I'm Irish. <laughs> Uh, so here he is, the finished um, miniature, ready to be uh, de deployed on the battlefield and fight for his uh, league. I am very happy with the end result. This video wasn't really intended to be made, but I am delighted that it was made because now I can... Well, basically, he's done for me now. Um, I hope you guys did, in fact, enjoy the video. I hope you got uh, liked all of the videos in this series. And there we have it, guys. League of Botan Champion is complete. Um, and obviously, the... Um, particular color scheme that I've chosen um, they actually feel more exo suits than any other so I'm really pleased with how this guy turned out knowing that in my future army I will have many more suits of this beautiful armor in my collection and um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a like below if you have any questions about anything I did in this video or any other video make sure you put it in the comments and I will get back to each and every one of you guys and if for some crazy reason you are not already subscribed to my channel it would mean the world to me if you took two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video.